from the network of the 1992 Olympic Winter Games. Next, from CBS Sports, in our 36th year of coverage, the National Football League. Greg Gumbel, along with Terry Bradshaw, we welcome you to week number seven here on the NFL Today. And we told you last week how scoring is off. Nothing's changed. After six weeks last season, there were 379 touchdowns. Six weeks this season, just 302. That's 77 fewer. And Mr. Bradshaw, I understand, has some ideas on how to change all that. A lot of soul searching. Fans are screaming and hollering. They want to see the, the excitement brought back in. And I've got Bradshaw ball. That's going to come up. You're going to love this stuff. It's yeah, good. That light bulb above your head is just <laughs> blinking on and off. A half hour to go until kickoff. Here's who's warming up. In Philadelphia's veteran stadium, linebacker Ricky Jackson of the unbeaten Saints, leading the league number one defense, which hasn't given up a rushing touchdown all season. In the Metrodome, Rich Gannon gets his second start this season at quarterback for Minnesota as he tries to refloat a sinking Viking ship against the Cardinals. Now, the big story in football this week happened nowhere near a football field. 49ers quarterback Joe Montana underwent surgery Wednesday to reconnect a torn tendon in his throwing elbow. CBS Sports has been told that Montana is suffering some pain from the operation, but he's glad the surgery is behind him and hopes to have his cast off in seven to ten days. The 35-year-old four-time Super Bowl winner is out for the season. He won't even throw again until next May, and team doctors give him an 80% chance of playing again. Uh, Terry, uh, first of all, I know you're glad that Joe had it done right now. Yeah, got it, and it's over with, and I know it's behind him now. He's thinking about rehab. The most important thing, the most important thing is don't rush. Don't rush back. Take your time. It's your career you're talking about. I came back way too soon, and it cost me my career. I had maybe two or three more years I would have liked to have played out like that. So the real key here is patience. Now you say the way Joe throws the ball is an advantage to him Re as far as his chances to play again. Really is, Greg. The thing about Montana is he's so technically sound. He sets up, he uses his entire body to throw the pass. He doesn't just snap it with his arm. He uses his entire body. Take a look at this. Let me show you what he does. Notice the hop. Really, this is amazing. Notice that you'll see the bounce. Watch his head dip. There's the dip. Now, he's balanced himself, got himself on his right leg. Now, look at full extension, leg forward, and the elbow straight up, high release, and there's no strain on one particular area. Not the shoulder, not the elbow, but it's a balanced technique. No one throws a football like this in the National Football League. I know some kids in college that do. But this technique he has, I think, will help him come back. Very, I think. very quickly, you think he can play again? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Just don't rush it. Take your time. All right. Well, 49ers host the Falcons later this afternoon here on CBS. And Randy Cross is standing by live at Candlestick Park. And, Randy, the question is, how are the Niners uh, are reacting today compared to the loss of Montana? Well, Greg, the last eight weeks, it's been Joe's elbow injury, then Joe resting his elbow injury, then Joe testing his elbow injury, and then Joe finally having surgery on his elbow. The guys are dealing with it well, but it's sort of been a little edgy around here. And the other day at practice, Jerry Rice wore Joe Montana's jersey out and gave the media the answer they really wanted. There's too much commotion on there. Yeah. And so? I think uh, you guys just need to let it die. Yeah, yeah the guy done had surgery, and we wish the Joe the best. Let it go. All right. So the mental attitude around here is real strong, Greg, but nobody's mental attitude is more important than quarterback Steve Young's. And Steve Young's been testy. He's been nervous. He's just been a little bit uptight. And it's the old saying, be careful of what you always wanted. You might get it. Well, Steve Young's got it. And what he does with it will determine the rest of the Niners' season. All right, Randy. Now, as far as linebacker Tim Harris is concerned, he was arrested for driving under the influence Friday. What's his status today? Well, he'll be out here and playing a lot. They're really going to use him a lot against this red gun offense with Charles Haley rushing the quarterback. But, you know, if he's convicted or pleads guilty to those charges, everybody loses. Tim Harris loses anywhere from fifty dollars to $100,000. The Packers' number two pick next year goes down to number three. And you're also looking at a situation where the 49ers lose a great defensive player. They were really counting on helping him down the stretch here. All right, Randy, thanks very much. Randy Cross, live from... Uh candlestick. Meanwhile, the Buffalo Bills are again without the services of lineman Bruce Smith. Last year's defensive player of the year has played just one game this season and was put on injured reserve yesterday 
as his surgically repaired left kneecap refuses to mend. Smith will be out at least four more weeks, and Terry, you are adamant about him not going back out on the field until he was ready. Well, you know, Bruce Smith stated that he was 75%, you know, healed. There's 25%, a quarter of him's not ready to go. Now, I feel like maybe there's some pressure from the defensive coaches of the Bills to make him get out there and play because they're ranked last in the National Football League, but to go out there once again, a greater player is he, an impact player who is not fully, you know, 75% is nowhere near enough to go out and play 90 percent yeah but you're talking about a knee and you're talking about a guy that that has a long career again so bad decision now he's down what four weeks I mean, one of those is going to be a bye there are some injuries you can't play through yeah i just don't think you can play with joint injuries i think you have to let them heal knees especially all right terry in philadelphia the eagles have landed with a thud last week they blew a lead and lost in the final four minutes to previously winless tampa bay and as Jim Gray reports, that prompted some finger-pointing among Eagle teammates. Frustrating. <laughs> yeah, sometimes you get, I mean, my, me, myself, and some other players on the defense, we get a little pig-headed and upset because, you know, we expect everything to go so smooth. But so far, it hasn't been. Now 3-3, three and three, and on their third quarterback, Philly's offense hasn't been able to produce, which has caused the defense to snipe. I understand it. When you play so recklessly and with emotion, you can't just turn it off when the, you know, when the whistle blows and, and you lose a game uh, by a point when you really had control of the game. We had a meeting Monday and they apologized to the team. Uh, sometimes you get so frustrated and you say things, and which it may, uh, some of the things you say may be right. Jerome, I understand there was a team meeting on Monday. Was everything cleared up? Enough of meetings. I mean, enough of talking. You know, it's time to get get busy. Meet, meet, meet. I mean, people get <laughs> get tired of meetings. You know. Bunch of bunch of air sometimes. Sometimes it helps, but right now we need we need to just regroup ourselves and, and, and do a, little, a lot of soul searching and get ready to go go to work. Rookie Brad Gable gets his second start at quarterback today for Philadelphia, but the Eagles' number one draft pick Anton Davis will watch from the bench. Philadelphia sat him down after the offensive tackle racked up seven penalties over the last two games. Now, speaking of birds on the endangered species list, the Toronto Blue Jays are one game away from elimination in the American League Championship Series against Minnesota. Last night, Kirby Puckett tied the game at 1-1, leading off the fourth inning with a 426-foot homer to straightaway center field. The Twins took off from there. They won at 9-3. They lead the series three games to one. Our Leslie Visser is taking a little time off from football to cover baseball. She joins us live from the Toronto Sky Dome. Hello, Leslie. Hi, Greg. I think the Jays could lose some of your, use some of your old uh, baseball skills. It's a tough assignment for them. They have Tom Candiotti on the mound today against Kevin Tappany. There was some speculation that it would be Juan Guzman, but Cito Gasson said, hey, we still have to win two more games, and he doesn't want to disrupt the rotation. I'm joined now by one of the heroes of the series so far, Mike Pagliarulo. Mike, Kirby Puckett says you take a 1,000 swings a day. Are you getting back to being a home run slugger? Well, I just want to uh, be as consistent as I can and... Uh, just try to do the best job I can do. What do you have to do today to wrap it up? Uh, well, try to stop that knuckleball from floating, and uh, you never know where the heck that thing's going to go. And uh, just keep our same approach and uh, stay focused. Well, like every good son, uh, he kisses his mother before the game. Back to you, Greg. <laughs> Leslie Pags, thanks very much. A reminder for you, CBS Sports coverage of Game 5 of that American League Championship Series begins at 4 Eastern time today. And CBS Sports coverage of Game 4 of the National League Championship Series begins at 8 Eastern time tonight. Randy Tomlin gets the start for the Pirates, Charlie Liebrandt for the Braves. Up next, back to football. We'll head back down on the field and tell you about the trouble facing Craig Hayward of the Saints when the NFL Today continues live from New York here on CBS. The NFL Today is sponsored by BMW, the ultimate driving machine. Big A Auto Parts. Look for the sign of Big A to keep your car running right. And by Craftsman, a line of over 1,600 hand tools made in America, guaranteed for life. On June 23rd, BMW introduced the completely redesigned 325i sports sedan. Begins at $28,365. All right, 
cavities. How many this time? Eight cavities. Fourteen cavities? I didn't think I had that many teeth. They're gonna have to drill. My parents will be very upset. Parents today hope their kids won't have to go through what they went through. Luckily, today's kids use the tooth based more dentists recommend. Crest. Crest fluoride formula strengthens tooth enamel, helping to protect against cavities. Another great checkup. Yes! Woo, woo, woo. Later, dude. <laughs> Crest, the dentist's choice, is the easy choice. It's been fun. Anything you can handle, we can handle. Yokohama High Performance Tires. Look for the sign. Top of the line parts. The red, blue, and white. Expert advice. It's a good sign. Your big A auto parts store. Keeps your car running right. Where the pros go for auto parts. Someone to depend on when you need to depend on your car. Well, what's the weather today? Glad you asked. A big band of clouds covers the central part of the country, but it's the heat and the sun that the Cowboys and the Bengals will have to watch for in Dallas, while in Kansas City, the Dolphins and the Chiefs will face wind gusts up to 25 miles an hour. Let's get closer to the action and head down on the field. First stop, Veteran Stadium, where the Eagles host the unbeaten Saints. New Orleans is without a key element of their offense today, and Dan Fouts explains why. Well, Craig Hayward was arrested early Saturday morning for the assault and battery of two Louisiana women at a Saints pep rally in Metairie, Louisiana. Hayward flew with the team here to Philadelphia yesterday, but early this morning flew back to New Orleans to answer the complaint. As far as today's game is concerned, the Eagles come in against the number one defense in the National Football League, the New Orleans Saints, and they're especially tough against the run. As you can see by this graphic, they have held some of the best runners in football to very mediocre afternoons. And while the Eagles will try to mount a, a rushing attack of their own today, they're averaging only three yards per carry, and it's been very difficult for them, especially going against this rock-solid defense of the New Orleans Saints, led by linebackers Swilling, Johnson, Jackson, and Sam Mills. That's the story here in Philadelphia. Back to the studio. All right, Dan, best defense you've seen in a long best. time in the Saints? Absolutely. But you know, the, the funny thing about this defense, not funny, but when you think about great defenses, you always, imperative, you always think of defensive linemen. That's normally the nucleus of it, you know, Steel Curtin, Joe Green. But when you think about the Saints defense, you think about their linebackers. And boy, they are an awesome bunch right now playing as good as anyone. Yeah, Mount Rush no more. Next stop, the Metrodome, where the Vikings host the Cardinals. As Jim Nance reports, the Vikes are struggling to salvage a two and four start. Well, Greg, Minnesota sports fans are experiencing two different seasons. The Twins are one win away today from going to the World Series, while the Vikings, losers of three straight, some feel are a loss away today from striking out for the whole season. The fans are fed up. You get the feeling the players are, too, because Monday, after bottoming out with that loss against the Lions, the Vikings players held a team meeting. No coaches were invited. Now, that is very commonplace for teams that are on the skid, but what was unusual about the session is the players would not talk to anyone, coaches or media, about what was discussed in that meeting. We do know this. Herschel Walker will start today. He missed his first NFL game ever last week because of a strained ligament in his left shoulder. And Greg and Terry, while working my way down to the Metrodome field, I came across one fan that I think typifies the feeling in this state about the Vikings. He had his Homer hanky with him. I said, hey, you brought it to the wrong game. He said, no, I use the Homer hanky even when they're on the road watching by the television. But when the Vikings are at home the way they've been playing this season, I use it as a crying towel. Let's go back to New York. <laughs> All right, Jim. Those Cardinals have strange effects oh, on teams. Hey, the, those Cardinals are making teams have those team meetings. Forced the Giants to have a team meeting. They went out. Rodney Hampton rushed for 137 yards. I'm sure the Vikings today hope Walker gets 137 yards, and they win. Terry, we want to take a moment here to remember Gene Barth. The 20-year NFL referee passed away Friday night in St. Louis after a lengthy illness. Barth was one of the men working the field at Super Bowl 18, and our condolences go out to the Barth family. Coming up, Terry introduces us to Bradshaw Ball, what he would do differently if he were running the NFL. That's next when we continue on the NFL Today. Yeah.
Most of my friends don't know what they're going to do after graduation. But I've already locked in guaranteed skill training in the Army. Qualify now and you can reserve even the Army's most sought-after technical training, up to 12 months in advance, through the Army's delayed entry program. Sure, being a soldier won't be easy, but then nothing worth having ever is. In 1895, Wilhelm Rankin discovered X-rays. The following year, Siemens worked closely with him to develop its first X-ray tubes. That was then. This is now. Today, Siemens manufactures imaging technology that helps doctors save lives. And with 35,000 people nationwide, the men and women of Siemens will continue to manufacture ideas that even Professor Rankin never dreamed of. Siemens. Precision thinking. The temperature never drops below Xerox. That's very important to remember, especially at a time like this, when it's very deserted and very cold. Ah, oh, you did remember Xerox antifreeze. The temperature never drops below Xerox. no better way to face the day. The morning belongs to Skin Bracer Aftershave. Its cool, brisk tingle really gets you going. And what a great scent. Skin Bracer. No better way to face the day you find better. Prices are low at Subway, but I'd rather focus on sandwiches. People call them hoagies or heroes or submarines, because they're shaped like submarines. But we call them Subway sandwiches. Our six-inch meatball sub features meatballs and sauce on bread I just baked, all for a low economical price. I won't say how low, but you'll probably find enough in the cushions of your couch. <laughs> for 25 years, Subway has quietly made some of the best sandwiches anywhere. Like the six-inch meatball sub, only $1.69, only at Subway. That's Eric Swan getting his first start at right defensive end today for the Cardinals. He was the sixth player taken in this year's NFL draft and the first drafted since 1946 who never played college ball. Well, the big story this season so far has been scoring, specifically the lack of it. And Mr. Bradshaw has taken a long look at the reasons why and has some ideas how to change things, starting with bringing back the passing game. I think the type of pass that's now being thrown is, is maybe changed a little bit from last year and in previous years. You see more play action passes now to tie in with the running games that the teams are trying to utilize to hold that ball for a time of possession. Well, to stop that, I say get rid of the zone defense. What a zone does is blanket the receivers when they run short pass routes. And it has a defender free to cover the long passes. It only allows a little outlet pass, and to me and others, that's not football. It is tougher. Teams are playing more and more zone, and anytime you play more and more zone, it's harder for a receiver to get open. I say bring back the old bump and run with real man-to-man -man defense. Look, I don't mind my receivers getting knocked around a little bit. At least they have a chance to break free for a long one than trying to run through a zone. You go man-to-man, -man, there's going to be some guys coming free, crossing routes, and the different picks that some of the teams have become so good at, and be a lot of points scored. Defensive players don't like and wouldn't like that at all because uh, one mistake in that, that's a touchdown. But Wes, that's exactly what I want to do. And as your commissioner, here's one proposal that defensive players will love. Right now, they say the ground can't cause a fumble. Baloney. I say if it does, it is, but not everybody agrees. I like the rule, the ground cannot cause a fumble. <clears throat> yeah, but it, but, it, but it would help scoring. Aren't you concerned about the league and the uh, scoring? When you I'm also concerned about keeping the ball in our possession also. <laughs> Well, you might get it, though. It doesn't mean necessarily. But we might not get it. Well, Emmett, my philosophy is nothing ventured, nothing gained. And I'd like to see the NFL allow two-point conversions after touchdowns. Remember, Emmett, it helped your coach Jimmy Johnson win a national championship for Miami when Florida State failed on a two-point try. I think the two-point conversion uh, could add a little bit. Uh, at least it would let the... Uh, uh, the media have another chance to second-guess the coach. <laughs> coach, here's another college rule the NFL could learn from. All you need is just one foot inbounds, and the catch counts. It would reward the receiver for a job well done. There's some exciting games that are low-scoring, you know, defensive battles and everything like that, but I think as fans and, uh, you know, when I watch a game, I like to see a lot of scoring. So do I. Now, will the NFL listen to me and change the rules or pass off this low-scoring humdrum as just a phase? I just think it's a, it's a cycle you're going through. I think it'll change. 
I mean, you don't ever know. We we're allowed to break out of it and score 18, 19 points. <laughs> what else? Well, I had about 32 other ways to improve the game. One was instead of first and 10, let's go first and 20. You know what that does? You have to throw the football. That's exciting. Another thing is stop the clock in the last two minutes of the half and at the end of the game after every play, therefore giving the team that's behind more opportunities to come from behind and win the game. And then if you want to have a colorful game, a colorful league, hey, let's get a colorful ball. And that is a colorful ball. That's the commissioner. That's right. <laughs> Next up, Pat O'Brien joins us to uh, clear up all the commotion on the sidelines these days. Pat has that and more as he takes us around the NFL today right after this. Anything you can handle, we can handle. Yokohama High Performance Tires. How do you get comfortable? I wear Comfort Tech shoes by Florishine. I'll tell you, they're the most comfortable shoes I've ever worn. Try a pair for 30 days. If you don't agree, you'll get your money back. Get Comfort Tech by Florishine and get comfortable. A recent Department of Energy study reveals that most American homes are under-insulated. And that means you. To find out what's right for your home, call Owens Corning at 1-800-GET-PINK. On June 23rd, BMW introduced the completely redesigned 325i sports sedan. BMW 325i begins at $28,365. It's that time of the day. Here's Pat O'Brien. All right, Greg, thank you, Commissioner. Nice to see you again. With Halloween uh, just around the corner, folks, it's time to unmask some startling truths and clarify a lot of those mixed signals that people seem to be giving off. Incidentally, as uh, managing editor of our little Sunday supplement, we endorse Terry Bradshaw's series of modest proposals Anyone who wants to make the game more fun deserves high marks. 18, 72, forward, fast, jingle, so. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo, ready or not, here we go. Hey! And hey, are these guys playing charades, Simon says, or are they auditioning as third base coaches? It seems they're trying to tell us something. We'll go split right, fake zoom, 60, set. Yeah, 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 whatever. You know, maybe it was an assistant coach who coined that phrase, I've got ants in my pants and I need to dance. Well, you might get some hand signals mixed up, and I might look at some of the guys and say, well, what did he call? They said, well, we don't know, so I just call whatever. Put the hands up like this, cross it, one of these, and then they all look at me and they go, what the heck are you doing? And what the heck are you doing may also be a good way of paraphrasing what Mike Ditka must have told NFL schedule maker Val Pinchbeck. Iron Mike got all pumped up when he saw that the Bears were slated to play on almost every other day but Sunday. They looked around the league and they said, who's the weirdest people? Ditka's weird. The Bears are weird. Let's give them a weird schedule. Actually, they had us playing a game in a zoo. We canceled it. The most respected man in Washington, Joe Gibbs, promised his players a day off for each victory. Now they're 6-0 and, oh and looking to collect. There's two things players like. They like days off and money. <laughs> I didn't have any money, so I said, uh, We'll give you some days off, so I think uh, we'll do the best we can if uh, if they earn that seven days off, then we'll, we'll, we'll find a way to get it done. And now for our kicker story, actually a tale of three kickers. Bobby Howfield, you may recall, was the Jets placement specialist in the early 70s. That is until he got the boot from Pat Leahy. Uh, fast forward here, please. Thank you, right there is fine. Yes, it's the same Pat Leahy, but today it's son of Howfield. I have a chance to go up against the guy that took over from my dad. It's probably once in a lifetime in the NFL, and uh, it's a great it's a great feeling to be able to be in that position. It really is. Another lay teammate made the Fu Manchu famous, among other things. And today in Indianapolis, where the Colts need all the luck they can get, 
Some hairy horseshoes are giving the old stash a touch of new panache. But maybe what this 0-6 team really needs are some ringers on their decimated offensive line. Uh, I started doing this the last time the Colts won a regular season game. That was quite a while ago. Oh, I sing the blues for those proud men who wear horseshoes. Lord, help our goals. Lord, help our goals. Do it! <laughs> That's uh, my baseball 91 band, by the way. They'll be it's back nice at 4 o'clock. Uh, a few uh, injury reports here. Eric Dickerson, as if the Colts didn't have bad enough news, he's out for the day. Jeff Farrad uh, also out there. Marcus Allen will practice this week. If it goes well, he'll play against the Rams on Sunday. And we told you this week about the Bo Jackson in, uh, injury. Doctor is pessimistic. He may never play football again. The people closest to Bo are saying that he took it in stride, uh, really wasn't too shocked about this, and apparently hopes he's not out of the woods on that one. You did say that a little earlier this week. A little uh, flack, did you? Uh, we were right. We'll leave the uh, phone open for any apologies that may be coming in. We'll be back with the last word before kickoff in just a moment. Indianapolis, Daytona, Pomona, Baja. Why do we go to such distant places to put craftsman tools to the test? If you're going to guarantee a tool forever, it's got to take the torture even guys like you dish out. 1,600 craftsman hand tools, made in America, guaranteed forever. And right now, you can get big national hardware sale savings on craftsman tools. So get to Sears fast. Action Adventure. Sexy show you've been waiting for. Real sexy. Is coming Friday to CBS. <laughs> hey! Oh! She's a corporate executive. Real babe. At the Palace Hotel. What's going on here? Stop it! Sometimes you can be a little rigid. Stop it! He's a former jewel thief. Real trouble. And her new head of security. Nightmare. You stole it. Yeah. She's the boss. She wishes. And she can't stand it. Once a bad. Says who? Says you. Keep your eyes on the Palace Guard. They're just working. Premiering Friday. Real sexy. On CBS. Greg Gumbel, Terry Bradshaw back with the last word at Veterans Stadium in Philadelphia. The Saints are without Ironhead Hayward, but does it matter when you got a defense like that? I don't, like I don't that? think it does. What's going to happen, I think today the Eagles are going to have to throw the football. That's their personnel. They're not a team that can run it. They will throw it today. Saints have won three of the last four games between these two teams. Meanwhile, at the Metrodome, the Minnesota Vikings and the Phoenix Cardinals, these teams haven't played since 1983. How about the Cards? Well, the Cards are a fascinating team. They've been getting turnovers. They've won games. Now they've lost games in the last quarter, but also the Vikings have lost games in the last four, and then the, the Lions were in the last week. We'll see how that affects them today. Yeah, the Cards have won the last four meetings between these two teams. For most of you, those games coming up next, we'll be back at halftime and throughout the afternoon with scores and highlights. But right now, it is game time on the NFL Today. Enjoy, everybody. On a sunsplashed October afternoon, west comes east. Coming up next, the New Orleans Saints and the Philadelphia Eagles from Veterans Stadium. We'll return to Veterans Stadium after this message from your local station. You're watching the NFL on CBS. This is CBS. <laughs> 